Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm putting my money where my mouth is and actually bought a motherboard which I've actually recommended in a build guide. But is it any good? Let's find out. Okay, so in today's video, we're we'll taking a look at the ASUS Prime B450M-K. This is version two, or K2, however you want to look at it. So this is a uh, enhanced version of the original version, which actually we reviewed ages ago. And in fact, the B450 chipset has actually come a long way since it was announced and released in March, 2018. It's now May, 2023, and these things are still being made. This is a brand spanking new board. So it does appear there is a little bit of life left in the old dog yet, but is it actually gonna be suitable for you? So realistically, if you're looking at this motherboard, then really you're looking at a kind of budget or mid-level build. Certainly this can actually take high-end processors such as the uh, 3950, etc., and potentially the 5950 if you wanted to. Obviously it isn't really suited to that. The VRM solution on here is relatively weak at being um, like a four plus one phase VRM, which is weak, no heat sinks on there. So clearly if you're using multi-core processors, this thing isn't gonna do particularly well and will thermal throttle straight away. But for the majority of people, if you're planning on putting something relatively modest in here, such as a six core processor, Ryzen 5 4500, Ryzen 5 3600 perhaps, that kind of thing, this is gonna be a fantastic little platform. And at the moment in the UK is very cost effective at under 60 pounds, which at the time of making the video, anything under 60 pounds is generally trash. And this actually has a few tricks up its sleeve. So let's take a close look at it, go through, do a board tour, and then we'll see what it's all about. And then obviously you can work out whether or not this is gonna be suitable for your next budget build. So let's go first of all through the kind of unboxing process, which is the norm here. So obviously this is the motherboard box. This is Prime B450 M-K Mark II, has the B450 chipset, as we've mentioned already, HDMI support, Ryzen 3000 series ready, was already imprinted on the box. It looks like they've added another sticker on there, saying Ryzen 5000 series ready. Also, the Windows 11 sticker is a little bit squiff as well, so that's been stuck on after the fact. There is, on the back, detailed specifications about the board, some of the key features, such as BOSS flashback, uh, gaming audio, if that is a thing, uh, M.2 support, which is relatively minimalist, but we'll take a look at that anyway, and also the uh, 5X protection, which, yeah, it's all marketing gimmickry, but we'll go through and see what else we get in the box. There is a M.2 plastic retainer. So this is their M.2 locker. I actually kind of like this. Sometimes the M.2 screws are a little bit of a pain in the backside. This is plastic, pushes through the hole in the motherboard, and then there's kind of like almost like a Coca-Cola ring pull. You just pull that off into disassemble, so you don't even need a screwdriver to install your M.2 drive. So that is uh, pretty cool. There is only one of those included. You do get two SATA cables, one with a right angle connector, one with a straight connector. You also get a IO shield, so at this price point, we don't have any captive IO shields. This one is okay, does the job, and it does have the markings on there to tell you what is what, so pretty handy. There is also a driver DVD. I'm not really sure who still uses these, but potentially there may still be a market for it. Clearly, they're including it, so somebody must be using them. Uh, there's a bunch of other paperwork in here, regulatory notices, technical updates, etc usual kind of stuff and just like an introduction tells you about the ports etc the main one really is going to be this one so this is the kind of user guide and this goes through in actually quite decent depth as well telling you about what the ports do the specifications uh, where the ports are how to connect them all that kind of usual stuff so yeah pretty straightforward stuff the actual main thing is obviously going to be the motherboard itself so as you can see this is a micro atx motherboard pretty tiny is actually quite small. There isn't actually a lot on it either, which uh, can be quite handy. Price-wise, again, around about £60 here in the UK. Something which I noticed straight away on this board is actually the design of it. It's quite a nice design language, so it is monochromatic. So we have got a black and white theme on here, and also we've got also a little bit of grey in there as well, so very neutral. No shades of brown on there, which is excellent. Yes, Gigabyte, I'm looking at you. But yeah, overall, I think it looks quite nice and should fit in pretty much with most builds. Again, at this kind of level of the market, you're probably not thinking aesthetics, you're more thinking of bargains, value for money, or basically just getting a PC up and running for as little money as physically possible. So, top corner, we've got an eight pin EPS connector. 
Uh, nice and easy to get to there and slightly unusual. It's on the uh, vertical alignment rather than being horizontal, which uh, kind of threw me to begin with, but I guess it does the same job, so it's absolutely fine. We've got our VRM around here, which is a, a four plus one setup. So again, not the most elaborate of VRM. Don't be putting high core count processors on here and expecting to overclock them because even though it is a B450 chipset and potentially overclocking is possible, it's not gonna do particularly well with it. So if you're looking at overclocking, then yeah, even with sticking on additional little heat sinks on there, you're not gonna get a great deal out of this board in terms of power delivery. Moving down, so we've got our AM4 socket. Now this is one of the few boards on the market that actually supports pretty much every single processor that has ever been made on the AM4 socket which is absolutely insane. So anything from a Ryzen 3 1200, being one of the first processors that came out in the first generation, right the way up to the Ryzen 5 5950. Again, not a particularly good choice for this board, but with the latest BIOS update on there, you can use pretty much any of them. So it is awesome. And again, if you're using modest processors or APUs, such as the 2200G, 3200G, those kind of things, you're not gonna have those incompatibility issues that you'd get with a B550 chipset or A520s and that kind of thing. So B450, in terms of a stable platform, pretty much does the right stuff, although it's not got quite the same amount of flexibility with PCI Express, as we'll see later. So moving across the top there, we've got a CPU fan header connector there, four pin PWM. You can control that in the QFAN software from ASUS. You've got two memory slots there, supporting up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So again, that is gonna be slightly limiting for some people. It does support RAM speeds up to DDR4 4400 megahertz, so 4400, so pretty high. Again, this isn't gonna have the best kind of interconnects, etc., and trace isolations, so don't be expecting kind of miracles from it, but potentially with the wind blowing on your side, you may get those kind of things, or you may get that kind of speed. In this top corner, basically nothing other than a few chips, no diagnostic LEDs or anything like that, no fan headers of such. Uh, 24 pin power connector there. And moving down, we've got our B450 chipset there with a heat sink over the top. You've got four SATA ports included. Moving across, you've got your front panel IO. Above that, there is a speaker header. Next that, USB 3.0 front panel header. And next that, there's two USB 2.0 headers next to each other. You've got your clear RTC or CMOS clear pins there. So two pins, you can short those out to reset the BIOS. Moving across from that, there is a debug header, which is more for kind of uh, the manufacturers to plug into, not a user thing really. Next up, there is a COM port header. Next up, there is the front panel IO connection. And above that, there is a speedif output. You've got your caps down there for the audio, which is a Realtek 897 codec on there. Uh, depending which version you get, you might get a slightly different one. They do switch them out depending on when the board is manufactured, etc. Going back, so we've got our M.2 slot. This is the only M.2 slot on here. So again, slightly limiting, but it does support PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 and also SATA drives, should you want to put a SATA-based M.2 drive on there. Again, you've got the little holes there which you can push the uh, connector through to hold them down. Here we've got a PCI Express Gen 3 slot. So this is times 16. Underneath that, PCI Express Gen 2 times 1 slots, two of those. Not really sure what you would actually use them for. I think they'd have probably been more beneficial to have had a single times four slot. That way you could have maybe installed an additional M.2 card. But if you think about when this was actually made back in, well, designed, I guess, back in kind of March 2018 sort of time, then things like M.2 drives back then were basically not really heard of. And people were still using hard disk drives for boot disks. So things have moved on. And obviously that is telling on this board. The technology isn't quite up there, but it is pretty cheap. So you take the rough of the smooth, unfortunately. Above this slot here, you've got a TPM header, should you need it. So if you, again, if you've got an older processor that doesn't support TPM for Windows 11 installations, you can install an additional TPM module to enable that functionality. You also then got a CR2032 BIOS battery there. Nice and easy to get to, should you need to reset it. And next to that, looking very lonely and sad on its own there is the motherboard's only chassis fan header yep there's only one on here so you are pretty much going to be using either just a single fan or you have to install some form of hub to connect up more fans or possibly even a splitter should you want to do more so i think that is uh 
kind of pretty much it. There's nothing else really going on there. On the back, there's nothing at all. I suppose we should take a look at the rear I.O. Again, there's not a great deal to shout about, but something which is excellent and is very welcome is our BOSS flashback button up in this top end there. So this does support native BOSS flashback. So if you are thinking of getting this, the B450 chipset, but getting a modern processor, maybe a lower end one, you don't have to worry about getting an older processor, putting it on there, flashing the BOSS and all that kind of stuff. BOSS flashback is built in straight away. Next up, we've got some older legacy ports. Again, harking back to kind of when this was designed. So we've got a VGA port, should you want to use that or have a need for it. These ports will only work if you're using an APU. And depending on the APU you use, you may or may not get full functionality out of these ports. So do bear that in mind. So yeah, VGA ports there. You've also got a DVI-D port and a HDMI port. No display port on this particular one, sadly. Next up, we've got USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, five gigabit per second, a combo split PS2 port, so for either keyboard or mouse. The bottom port on there, I should mention as well, is for the BOSS flashback utility. So that is the one you use for BOSS flashbacks. Next up, you've got some legacy ports again, so USB 2.0 ports. Next up, another two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, five gigabit per second. Above that, we've got our Realtek Gigabit LAN, so that's the RTL81118H chipset on there. Uh, it's backwards compatible, 10100, etc., and fast Ethernet. Next up, you've got your three audio ports on there, so obviously if you do want to get 7.1 audio out of this, you're going to be using either the Speedif, or you're going to have to reroute the audio from the front panel connections to give you those extra ones, but you do have the usual suspects there, line ear out, and also your microphone ports, which for most people are going to be absolutely fine. Other than that, it's pretty much a basic board. There is a little bit of illumination. Uh, I wouldn't say RGB, it's basically either on or pulsing or off. And there's like a track which runs down through here. And also there are some LEDs on the bottom and the side as well, just to illuminate the board a little bit in a kind of yellowy orange. So yeah, no RGB other than that at all. No Wi-Fi, no wireless, no Bluetooth. Basically it is a bog standard board. So if you want to have a board with Wi-Fi and you want Bluetooth or that kind of stuff, then you are going to be looking at spending a little bit more money. And actually, it's not a bad thing because for not a great deal extra from where the motherboard prices are at the moment, if you start spending another 10, 20, 30 pounds, you do have a lot more options. So potentially those might be worth considering also. But if you are on a very, very strict budget and you have some specific needs and this ticks most of those boxes, then I don't see why not. I've actually bought this to do a PC build based on one which we did for a video which has probably been already released and potentially if you've already watched our live streams, you've probably seen this being built into it already. So hopefully it's all gone well. You never know. You'll have to watch the live stream to find out, which is available on Saturday evenings here in the UK at around about eight o'clock in the evening. Um, if you're subscribed, obviously you'll get a notification of that coming up anyway. Well, I think anyway, that's gonna wrap things up. For 60 pounds, I think this is uh, pretty awesome. Again, the PC market at the moment is pretty dire, and this is pretty much the best of a bad bunch in terms of pricing. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. If you want to find out more about this board in terms of how to do bars flash, etc., we will be doing a separate standalone video for that and also a bars walkthrough. So do look out for those also. But I think that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.